Hello and welcome back to another episode of my ability system series. Today we are going to implement a damage system so that when our spider enemy hits us there is actually something happening so our HP will be reduced and before that happens the damage has to be calculated. To start off let's go into our blueprints folder and add a new folder here for interfaces. Then open that up and create a new blueprint interface that we will call i underscore damageable and we will make it so that every class that can receive damage will need to implement that interface and needs to define what happens when it got hit by an attack. So the only thing we need in here is one function that we will call on receive damage and there are a couple of parameters that we need to tell our class about when it's supposed to receive damage. So let's add some inputs. First off, there will be the base damage. And let's make that a float. And another one, this will be the type. So damage type like physical, magical and so on. And this will be an E underscore damage type. After that, we need the element of the attack and that will be a master element class. Then we need an integer, which will be the crit chance. So if that integer is set to 50, every second hit should be a critical strike. Also, we need an attacker, which will just be an actor reference. And finally, we need the spell if one was used to do that damage. And this will also be a reference but a master skill reference. Alright, compile and save our interface, then we can already close it. Let's go back to our blueprints folder and we will add another folder for libraries, which we haven't used in any of my series yet, so library is basically a collection of very generic functions that you are able to use in every other blueprint and we will use it to define our damage calculations so we can call that in the character but also in the enemy class if we want to so let's open up our libraries right click and a new blueprint function library that i will just call l underscore combat library then open that up and in here we need two functions first one will be is enemy so this will be a pure function so check this it will have one input which is the actor that we need to check just the reference let's call that actor or something and an output which we can just call out and that will be a boolean defining whether it's an enemy or not the only thing we need to do here is get the class of our actor and we need to check whether that equals the master enemy class or and the other condition will be that the class is any of the child classes of master enemy. To check for that you just need to drag off the get class and search for is child of and then you can select the parent class here so that will be master enemy again. Connect the return value to the OR and connect the OR to the OUT return value Then compile save this and then we need a function which will be calculate final damage. Here we also need a couple of inputs so add a new parameter. First we need the base damage which we will set to be a float. Then we also want to have the crit chance because in that function here we will define whether it is a critical strike or not and if so modify the base damage, make that an integer. Also we need the attacker element which will be a master element class and finally the defender element. also master element class. Additionally we need some outputs so an integer which will be the final damage 
then a boolean which we can call critical question mark and finally effectiveness that will just tell us whether the attack was super effective or not effective type for that will be e underscore effectiveness all right since you cannot promote variables in function libraries, we need to create our local variables first. Let's call one current damage and make that a float. And that one will be altered throughout the whole function here. Then we need a local crit, which we can make a boolean, and a local effectiveness, which will be an E underscore effectiveness. All right, compile, save, and now let's get to our function. So the first thing that I would like to do here is to set the current damage. So just hold Alt, drag that in. And we will set it to the base damage times float times float. And then let's get a random float in range. Let's set the min to 0.9 and max to 1.1. .1 then plug that into the current damage. So what that just does, that we will either increase or decrease our base damage by a value in between zero and 10%. I noticed that this is used in many games, so you don't always see the exact same damage number, but there is a little bit of variety. Now let's check whether the attack is effective. So let's add a branch. And there is one condition we need to check first. So we need to see that our attacker element is a valid class and that the same thing is true for our defender element. Connect that to the end and to the condition. If it's false, we can just set our local effectiveness to effective. So it will neither be super effective nor not effective. But if it's true, so both classes are valid, we want to see the class defaults of our defender element get class defaults and then we got our element info here break that let's show only the weaknesses and resistances what we want to see is whether the weaknesses of the defender contains the attacker element add a branch for that and connect it to the true path of the first branch if that is the case, we can set our local effectiveness to super effective. If not, we need to add another branch just by holding down B and left clicking, connect that to the false. And now we want to see whether the resistances contain the attacker element. Plug that in for the condition here. If that's true, we will set the local effectiveness to not effective. And if that is false as well, we can just set it to effective. All right, so now we determined whether the attack is effective, not effective, or super effective. And we also need to change our current damage according to that. So drag in current damage, set it, and we will connect all the path to it. Then for the new value, let's get it. And again, we will multiply it by another float and plug that in for the new value. And for the value we, we multiply it by, let's use a select node and plug in the local effectiveness as the index. And then you can type in how you want to change the damage, if it's effective, super effective or not effective. So if it's effective, we will just multiply it by one. So it will remain the same value. If it's super effective by 1.5, and if not effective by 0.75. After that, we need to figure out whether it is a critical strike. So let's get a random integer in range, minimum being one and maximum 100. We want to see if that random integer is less than or equal to the crit chance from our input node. So drag that all the way to the right. And we want to set our local crit to that. After we did that, let's again set the current damage. 
and let's copy over our current damage and the times node. So copy paste, plug it in here. Again select. This time the index will be our local crit. If it's true we will just multiply it by 2 for the double damage and if it's false just by 1 so it will again be the same. After that we can return and round our current damage then plug it in for the out damage. Critical will be our local crit and the effectiveness our local effectiveness. Alright, compile and save and let's go over our damage calculation once again. So first thing, just for some more variety in our damage numbers, we get a random float between 0.9 and 1.1 and multiply our base damage by that. So we either increase or decrease our damage by a value in between 0 and 10%. After that we check whether both elements are valid and if so, determine the effectiveness. If the attack element is a weakness of the defender element, it will be super effective. However, if the defender element's resistances contains it, it will be not effective. And if both conditions are false, it will be just normal effective. Then we update our current damage according to the effectiveness. So either we multiply it by 1.5 if it's super effective, or by 0.75 if it's not effective. After that, we get a random integer and check if that's less than or equal to our crit chance. So we basically a roll whether it's a crit. If so, we multiply it by 2. If not, it will be the same value. And after that we return. So that's it for our simple damage calculation. Then we can basically close a library. And what we are still missing is implementing our interface in our character. So open up the third person character. Head over to the class settings and here under interfaces we will add the i underscore damageable then you need to compile and save to make it update. And in the event graph you can now right click and search for event on receive damage. First off, let's add a branch to check whether we actually want to apply damage. And that should only happen if our base damage is not equal to zero. And our attacker has to be an enemy, so is enemy Connect that to the end, the end to the condition. If it's false, just don't do anything. If it's true, we will call calculate final damage. Plug in the base damage from our input node, as well as the crit chance. And the element will be the attacker element. For the defender element, we'll just promote that to a variable, call it element. So this will be the element of our player. You can change that by equipment or something like that if you want to. And after we calculated final damage, let's call modify stat. Stat here will be health. It will be animated and the by will be our damage that we have to multiply by minus one before we plug it in the by amount. Okay, compile and save. You can add a comment box around that if you want to. And the only thing left that we need to create in order to be able to test it is to go into our master enemy. Open that up. And we need to go to our notify hit because we're not doing anything here. What we want to do is a line trace for objects. For the start location, we would just get our own actor location get actor location, plug that right in to the start. Then for the end, we need to do a little bit of math. So to our current location, we will add a vector. And because we want to shoot a line in the direction our enemy is facing, we need to get actor rotation of ourselves, get the forward vector, and multiply that by a float that we can promote to another variable, which will basically be the attack trace distance. Make sure you compile and give that a default value, otherwise you won't see anything. I will set it to 90. So we will trace 90 Unreal units. Plug that in for the add vector here, and then the vector for the end location. Check trace complex, ignore self, okay. 
for the object types we will make an array of pawns then add a branch for the return value so we will see if we hit anything at all if so let's break the hit result get our hit actor and we need to see if we can even apply damage to him so to do that you just need to call a function with the name does implement interface then select the class so i underscore damageable and add another branch for that connect it to the true of the first one if so get the hit actor and call on receive damage and it's asking for all of that inputs we specified before so base damage let's promote that to a variable just called base damage type should also be a variable because that can vary based on the enemy class so let's call that damage type as well as the element so promote that and call it element the attacker will be ourselves and since it's just a basic attack we don't need any spell reference but the crit chance will be another variable called crit chance after we created all of those variables we can compile save and give those default values so base damage i'll set to 35 or something the damage type should be physical our element can be set to none for now and the crit chance let's maybe say 25 percent so every fourth hit should be a critical strike right let's test this now so we see we have 300 hp let's get close to our enemy so it notices us and if it hits us we are dealt damage it's decreasing very slow you can see it's doing approximately 30 damage but with some slight variations just to show that the whole system is working let's change up the element and by the way if you're not seeing your elements here what you need to do is go into your skill system blueprints elements just open up every element and compile save it okay then you can close them and you should be able to select them in the enemy now let's say our spider is a fire spider and then also let's go to the third person character and our element will be let's say ice if we compile and save now it should kill us much quicker so let's go here and as you can see it deals approximately double damage like it did before and if we close and maybe keep the ice here but let's actually see what resistance ice has so it has leave let's go to our master enemy set the element here to leave and it should re deal very few damage now so let's see seems like it hit two critical strikes but if it hits a usual strike it's not that much of damage all right, thank you for watching and see you in the next episode in which we will make it so that our enemy can also take damage and be killed.